Away you go, Kathy. Thanks. Okay, sorry. It's moved on me now. Um, no. So let's have a look at these. I'm sure everyone has seen them at one stage or another. Um, they are familiar to everybody. I think this is Bing. Maybe you've heard of Gemini, Claude, OpenAI, ChatGPT. Um, has anybody used any of these? You can give me a thumbs up in the chat if you wish. Anybody used any of them? Marcus, you can probably see that, can you? Yeah, Kathy, I was just saying I've used ChatGPT and yeah. I'm finding it really useful, but um, I'd like to learn more about the prompt writing. I know it's a great skill in itself, really. So yeah. just honing in on my prompts is what I want to work on. That's fantastic. And we'll be and we'll be concentrating on prompts today. So that's great news. So everybody seems to be familiar with some of these words. And it's, they're kind of like cars. A car gets us from A to B. And these are different iterations of AI. This one here, though, is the odd one out, OpenAI, because this is actually a company. Um, maybe you've heard of it already, that um, it's been around for about 14 years. And OpenAI have been working on creating chat GPT. The ChatGPT started off as um, a chatbot back in the 1940s. The idea of creating this was born, to, for want of a better word. And in the 1960s, the first chatbot was tested on people who were told it was a psychologist. And they, after communicating with it, they believed it was a psychologist. So that's how old it is. It's nothing new, so nothing to be afraid of. The reason I've got this big, huge arrow that you can't miss going from OpenAI to ChatGPT is because OpenAI were given reportedly $20 billion by Microsoft in order to develop ChatGPT because our friend Bill Gates saw the potential in ChatGPT and at GPT and how it could work for all of us in our workspace. So we'll just pop on to the next one here. This is a video that I wanted to put up on the screen for you. It'll be, you can have a look at it later. There are many, many videos available. And as I was saying to Fergus earlier, videos that are older than two or three months, I don't tend to look at anymore or information that's older than that because things are moving so quickly. But we don't want to be uncomfortable with them moving so quickly. It's just because so many people are involved that it feels like it's very fast. But as I said, it's been around for decades. Um, the video is by the BBC and it's a really nice video for you to enjoy later, about five minutes long. And it's five things you need to know about AI. Can you tell me, guys, and please jump in, turn on your microphone if you want, say whatever you feel like saying. Can you tell me what's one or two words that would describe something that makes you uncomfortable about AI? Anybody want to? Say anything new? Someone just typed in Kathy Fear. Someone else typed in the speed at which it is developing. Okay, fantastic. They are fantastic points. Thanks very much, Fergus, because I can't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Deep fake. Deep. Someone else has typed in. Deep fake. Yeah. Is great. the information accurate? Is information is copy accurate. assignments? Copy assignments. Okay, great. They are fantastic points and we're looking at all of them today. So you've made my day, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. So, and they're very normal fears. Many, many people feel the same way. Let's have a, a another quick, uh, quick think. Is there something positive that springs to mind when you think about AI? When you've been working with it or if you've been dabbling in it, what is it that you think you might like about it? Or what is it that you've seen so far that you went, hmm, that, that's something I could use and that's something I like. Or Saves time in preliminaries, new ideas, very time efficient. Yes. Yeah. So time saving, come up. Yes. Uh, it does tasks that we hate. Yeah. Bridie, what about <laughs> Bridie putting copy assignments? Is that a positive as well? Copy assignments. <laughs> 
Yes, uh, getting feedback that the assignments is way above their level. Yeah, yeah. We'll have the assignments are happening then. Yeah, especially yeah. from foreign students. They're not yeah. speaking that way. Yeah, the assignments is fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they're easy to spot, aren't they? They're easy to spot. So we're going to have a look at all of that. So watch this video later on um, this evening or, you know, whenever you have time, because it's really straightforward. The BBC always do a great job, so I'm not going to bore you by playing it. We'll just move on to the main points. And I have them here. Um, we'll just... Here it is here. So that's what is AI. So AI, as I said, has been around for decades. It, um, it generates the next word that was the original chatbot. So if you have the word black, you'll probably have the word coffee and then you'll probably have the word hot. It was that simple at the beginning. It's like neurons that were just connecting together and um, putting the different words together. And now it's a bit more sophisticated. It can bring the next sentence forward for us. And if you know, if you think of writing a theorem in maths, that would be an easy thing to generate because it's preset already. And um, the the pre-trained, the P for chat GPT is many, many people have been feeding lots of information into the machine, which is the computer, and training it to understand what people are looking for or training it that this image is the image of a dog, not an image of a triangle or whatever. Um, so that's what it is. It's just a computer facility that has a lot of power and a lot of work has gone into it. And um, this was another point that was made in the video. I can't feel or think. And that is true. Don't forget, guys, this is just a machine. So it's not going to um, get up and do a marathon or anything. But it makes us feel sometimes uncomfortable that it can uh, express emotion or it can be um, cognizant. But that's only because they make an effort for the machine to use words that humans use. So we're more comfortable using it. This isn't a bad thing because it makes it very easy and quick for us to use. We don't have a learning curve of trying to speak in uh, some magic computer language. We can just speak normally. And this is one that's really interesting. It makes stuff up or hallucinations as are commonly known. We're going to have a look at this now and that's where the prompt comes in. And I'm sorry, I can't remember your name, but somebody mentioned the prompt and the prompt is everything. That's where it's at, guys. The prompt is the instruction that we give AI in order to generate the information that we want or the um, product that we want. And as he used to say in the good old days, rubbish in, rubbish out. Now it works differently from Google where we just put in restaurants near me or side tables or something inanimate that you're looking for. With ChatGPT or with AI, what you do is you approach it like it's your really clever personal assistant. So you're a really good manager that goes to your colleague, which we'll call AI now. You give it all of the parameters and information it needs to do the job, and then you let it go and do the job and come back with the finished complete job. And it has incredible potential. So they're the things we're looking at today. Now, let's have a see and how, how we can find it. So this is the new logo for Microsoft. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Everybody has their, whoops, whoops. <laughs> Everybody, I love this circle. Everybody has their work computer and Microsoft, the new Microsoft is embedded in our Outlook. It's embedded in Teams, it's everywhere. And within Microsoft, you may remember I mentioned that um, Microsoft billions of dollars to open AI to develop ChatGPT. Well, ChatGPT had different iterations. There was ChatGPT 3. It's like, you know, the first series of a car and then 3.5 and then this 3.4. So currently ChatGPT 3, number 4, is the best one available to us. It's like the Mercedes of cars. And Microsoft called their chat GPT-4, which is normally $20 a month. They call it Copilot, and it is free and embedded in your work computer and all of your work devices. So that's fantastic. And the difference between chat GPT 3.5 
and four is that 3.5, it's not current, it's not completely up to date. Whereas four, which is this one, which is embedded in all of your work devices, is in, up to date, it's entirely current and you'll get the best and the latest information. Does anybody have any questions so far? And um, you can unmute if you have a question for Kathy or type in whichever you want. Kathy, by the way, the sound is absolutely perfect, so that's great. That's fantastic. It's it's my fault. I have so many machines around me, <laughs> so I turned everything off. Thank you. Well, Linda saved her bacon by chatting about um her use of ChatGPT and how she used the prompts. So that was. I know. Great. I got I got the end of it there, Linda. It's great. It's just fantastic. It really is. So everyone's mm. okay for the minute, or looks like it. Okay, I'll just carry on. That's great. Now, so let's have a look at this and let's find it. So here we are. Oh, whoops, sorry. Excuse me. A little bit of a glitch there. I'm going to present now. Okay. So let's find so we're just going to find this now on the screen. And here it is up here. You see the cursor looking? There we go. And you click that and it opens this window, which is the copilot. A GPT four window. You write. What was that symbol at the top, Linda? Just in case people couldn't see it, the small one you clicked at the beginning. Uh, okay, I've just stopped it here. So you see here, you see yeah. the symbol here. What is when it? You, just explain what it is, because it's very small. When you, yeah, I'm afraid. It, it, is it a it pen is, or what is it? This is the Microsoft Copilot symbol. And if you have your cursor over it, it says Copilot. And let me just go back a screen, okay. the symbol. There they are there. Okay. That's why I have them here. This is a huge version of them. Okay. And there it is. There's the little version. So down at the yeah. bottom of your screen, I've chosen Microsoft Edge. My screen opens. I know Google is in front of us, but my screen opens. And I'm going to go back to the beginning of this here. So I open Microsoft Edge and here is my screen. Okay. Okay. I'm just, this is a recording, obviously. So I'm going to press play. There we have the symbol. We click it. When we click it, this pane opens. Okay. And this is where all the magic happens. And this is where you can type or you can record. Now I've opened a bigger screen. Okay. So everybody can see it. Don't forget your microphone is there so you can speak if you wish, or you can type something in. So this is where the hallucinations might happen. If you type something in and it's rubbish, like I'm typing in here now, or this is recorded a little earlier, I need a lesson. And if you press, if you press go, go make a lesson for me, you'll get rubbish back. So on your screen, you'll see you can ask for um, a template. You can ask for it to create something, to summarize something. You can ask it to be more creative or more balanced or more precise in the tone that it gives you your answer. Um, again, there's the co-pilot symbol. Maybe everybody can see it more clearly now when the screen is still. And there's the Microsoft symbol. It's always there, sitting there at the top of the right hand of the screen. Okay. So the prompt, the prompt is everything, because if we continued with this, we would just get lots and lots of rubbish back. So what we're going to do is talk about what is a prompt. So as I said to you, it's like you're a fantastic manager and your work colleague, you need them to do something for you. So you give them all the parameters. So let's have a look at some of the parameters to think about when you're creating a prompt, uh, an instruction for AI. So you can think about the context. You can be specific. So your context might be you're an ESOL teacher um, of level two for adult learners, or you're a literacy teacher uh, for numeracy for adult learners, or anything you want. So give AI an opportunity to know what it is you want it to examine for you or what it is you want it to focus on. And it will, just like when you're speaking to someone, if you say, I want to speak about the holiday we're organizing, then the person is focused on going, great, we're going to talk about the holiday. And be more specific. What do you what do you want it to do? Create, you could use create, make, 
generate any action verb is good. Create a lesson plan for adult learners. So I'm being pretty specific, they're not children. About English grammar, again, that's pretty specific. And present continuous, that's the grammar I want to look at. Okay. So there's two considerations and here's two more. Your intent, what is it that you want to happen? Generate a practice exercise with 10 questions. You could have 30 questions, whatever you want. You could generate two, three practice exercises, whatever suits you. Why do you want to do it? You want to test their proficiency in using present continuous. And the output format, how do you want it to look? You can look any way you wish. You can make a video, you can do whatever you want. Here, we're just going to use a gap fill format. Create a second practice sheet. Then I've decided when I was writing my prompt, I went, hey, I'll have two sheets, 10 questions on that as well. Use multiple choice format, just two choices. That's enough. I don't want my page to look messy. And I could add six or seven more lines if I wanted. There is, you have a 4,000 word limit. You could keep on going. Just as long as you're specific enough to create what you want. So let's let's have a look to see what that looks like. So we've taught, thought about the context. We've been pretty specific. We know what our intent is and we know what we want it to look like. So let's have a look at this. Now, before I press play, let's go up here again so you can see there is the co-pilot symbol. You're in Microsoft Edge. The screen is opened, there is a co-pilot symbol. And when you click on that symbol, in this space here, you'll see the pane open where you put in your prompt. So let's play record, play rather, let's press play. And we go up to co-pilot, we click co-pilot. And here the pane opens. This is where we ask our question, but I've made the screen bigger so everybody can see it. Here we go, ask me anything, it says. Again, don't forget your microphone, it's fantastic, especially if you're very tired or if you're holding hard copy reference and you want to speak it in, it is no problem. I, photo I copied and pasted this. And here is our lesson plan, present continuous, the objectives, the materials, the duration, activities, practice exercise, gap fill, there it is. And then my other practice sheet that I asked for are multiple choice questions. And they have the choice of two, just like I asked for. Now, in technology, fantastic. <laughs> so just to have a look at this. You can then read over them if you want to make sure they make sense, they're logical, nothing crazy going on. And there shouldn't be because your prompt was pretty exact. It's if your prompt is vague or not precise enough, that's when you tend to get rubbish back. You can go down here to this symbol and this is copy. And if you press copy, you can copy it into Word. You can copy it into um, another app like CuriPod, which will turn it into a presentation. You can do what you wish. The thumbs up and down is only for Microsoft to know if they're doing a good job or not. And I would, I sometimes do click the thumbs up if I think they've given a good answer because it helps for the next person who wants some information. Okay, so that's great. Any questions so far? So once again, you can unmute and ask Kathy something or type in whichever you feel. Thanks, can I, Fergus. Can I just ask, what was the other um, app you said you could copy it into Microsoft Word and something else? You said like CuriePad or something? Yeah, I did. So we have, um, and hi, how are you? I'm sorry, I can't see you and I can't see your name. Paula. Paula yeah. <laughs> hi, Paula, how are you? Yeah, Paula, I, I will show you a few um, apps at the end that are really great. It's called CuriePod. There's apps for making presentations. There is apps for making videos. There's so many apps, but what we're doing here for, and every one of them is based on the model of ChatGPT. Are you with me? Every single app that is AI generated out there is based on the model of the, the um, generative um, production of the information. So this is where it all starts. So you can generate everything you want yourself. You can also go in here and you can say, um, create a template for, um, a PowerPoint for me, and then you can put it into your ordinary PowerPoint and it'll work. Okay, you'll I'll show you more in a minute, Paula, and you can ask me more questions if you want, if it's not clear. Okay.
No, perfect. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thanks for the questions. So then we've we had our four points. We had our intent and being specific and the content and um, the format. And then you can ask the questions. So we got we got that um lesson plan back. We got our practice sheets back. We asked for two of them. One was gap fill. We asked that it would be for adults. We asked that it would be for level two English. And it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. But you can continue to edit and ask AI more questions if you need fine tuning or clarity. Or if you change your mind, if you get you get what you asked for and you think, oh, that doesn't really hit the mark. And then also you can fact check. Not easy to say, guys. <laughs> You can ask AI to fact check itself. And an easy way to do it is in some of the information it gave you and then tell it to go and find the, the point of reference. And if the point of reference was a tabloid newspaper, then you know it's nonsense. But I have to remind you that if your prompt is good, it means you know what the context is, that you um, state your intent, you're as precise as you can be, and you give it a format for delivery, you should really avoid those hallucinations. Let's go back to this, though, because this is wonderful question part. And let me show you an example. So we did our two practice sheets. And we got our answers for our gap fill and we got it for the multiple choice. The grammar was present continuous. Um, but I just think that maybe I want the language to be a bit more interesting because it's for adults, more adult appropriate. So here I am again, before I press, press play, I'm in Microsoft Edge, which will be at the end of everybody's screen. Anytime you turn on your laptop or your whatever, you go up here to this symbol, which is the co-pilot symbol. Remember I showed you the big huge one on a different slide. And you click this, it opens a pane here, which is the AI. And you can make this pane bigger, which is what I've been doing for you guys. So let's play it and watch. Okay, so this is a recording, you know that. Here we go up there. I've clicked this. There's the pane. I've gone up here to make it bigger. Oh, no, I didn't bother this time. Now, generate. Always. And fill. Gap practice questions. I haven't speeded this up so you can actually see how it's really working because I know the others were very, very fast. Okay. English level two adults. Okay. And this was the difference. This was just what I want them to change, what I want AI to change about what it's given me already. And it remembers the conversation we had. It remembers that it created that lesson for us. So it knows what I'm talking about. Could you just read out, Kathy, what's typing in the bottom corner in case people sure. are text it too small and they can't see it? Sure. It says it here. Now generate 10 fill gap practice questions for English level two adults and use more adult appropriate language and subject matter. And here it is, certainly. Thanks. And it's giving me more adult appropriate language. The CEO's decision to mentioning research documentaries, far more appropriate for adults. Look, guys, I made a mistake. Can you spot the mistake? What grammar is it using? Is it using present continuous? No. Because I forgot to state that it was present continuous, I want it. So I'm going back again. Now create the same practice. So I loved this. I loved what they did. This was great because it was more adult appropriate. Now create the same practice lesson with present continuous grammar at level two. And it gives you your question that you've asked, your prompt that you've asked, just to make sure you're okay. And the co-pilot says, yes, hello to us as if it was human, but it's not, it's only a machine. And then there it is with the present continuous grammar. So you see, you can ask as many questions as you want. You can go back as many times as you want within reason. Your limit is 4,000 characters, but that's a lot. That is a lot. Okay. At the, um, there's a question from Esme saying, um, 
I use a lot of visuals. Is there an app that will add appropriate images or visuals to the worksheets? Or do I have to do that myself? Um, es Esme, do you mean that do you have to generate each image yourself or is there, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. So I think she means if the exercises are about shopping and um, yeah. can, can the chat GPT or Copilot pull in oh, yeah. shopping images with alongside the gap fill exercise on shopping? Yeah. Is that um, right, Esme? Yeah. I, I know I'm pretty sure that neither Copilot or chat GPT can, but is there another app? That'll do yeah. that. Or so still need chat, to go. Chat, chat, hi, Esme, how are you? Chat GPT 4 and Copilot are the same thing. It's just Copilot, we don't have to pay for it. It's in all of our work devices. That's the only difference. And Chat GPT 4, for everybody else, they have to pay their $20. Just to make, make that clear, guys, you're getting all of the fantastic facility of Chat GPT 4. Yeah, Esme, if you're creating something, you could say maybe um, create a poem about springtime and include an image of daffodils. Is that what you mean? And it will. Kathy, you broke up there a little bit. Could you just repeat that, please? Okay, Esme, you could say, create um, a poem about springtime that is 20 lines long and include an image of daffodils. And Perfect. it will do that. Okay. But do you want to know if there's an actual app just to do that? Well, it, it's just as quick doing it yourself in... Um, Copilot Esme and there possibly is an app but I can't tell you the name of it now I'm not going to pretend I know because there's so many apps there's oh, thousands of apps but I'll talk about that in a minute when I show you some at the end I hope that answer is okay for the minute that's great thanks okay you're welcome now on the last one don't forget spelling and grammar but that's just for everybody who's a nerd like me <laughs> why waste the machine's time trying to decipher what word you actually meant, why not just let it on and give you the answer you want as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, here we go. Everybody can turn on their mic if they want and join in, because I really want to know what you have to say. What are your pinch points? So when you're trying to create your work, when you're trying to get ready for your class, or when your class is finished and you have all your administration work to do, or when you're trying to get your lesson plans organized for the rest of the week or the rest of the month or the year, what is your pinch point? I know for me, it is um, getting appropriate images um, that are for adults, but are still at the level of say level two or level three, Whereas normally images that would be available would be more child orientated at that level. What about you guys? Appropriate class games or quizzes maybe for your e for your literacy classes, your lesson plans for literacy or ESOL, scheme of work for the year, original images. Kathy, if I may, I have a question again. Um, it's Linda here, and it's Hi, about Linda. when you create prompts and you you know it generates what you want. Um, apart from copying and pasting it into a Word document, and you mentioned another app, and saving it into a folder, how do I, if I'm moving from subject to subject or different things, how do I keep a continuous thread with, um, say I'm working on a play and then I might go to an Esau lesson, how mm -hmm. do I keep that thread um, kind keep, of Keep following. that thread going, yeah. Um, keep that thread going. Well, in the chat GPT four screen, you have the the you can open up the bar on the right on the left hand side, Linda. Um, let me see. Um, I'm reluctant to come out of here. Yeah, so that's a great question because you're going to have five or six different things going on, and to keep the thread of chat going. But if you if you remember this little symbol for the copy, if you just copy it, it copies it to clipboard. And it copies it on your device. And are you talking about it being available on more than one device or just coming back to the same conversation several days later? No, just coming back to it. So it might be working on something that might take several weeks, you know, it might take a bit more time or, you know, I might be entirely happy with it. And I might it, want to go back to it again. And it, 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 it will be in there. Bing, which was before Copilot, Bing famously couldn't remember any of your conversations, but Copilot is the same as ChatGPT4. So if you just press, um, if you just click 
the copy icon at the bottom or after it has generated the prompt you want, the answer to the prompt you want and the prompt, it brings it onto the clipboard, it'll keep it for you and it'll remember it for the next time. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to come out. Then, is it? And, and get it back and put it put it back into yeah so when you when you go into when you go into um copilot the next time i keep calling it chat gpt four because it's the same thing but when you go in copilot the next time then you'll see you know the um the drop down menu you'll see a menu icon on the right of the ai pane mm -hmm. okay let me see i'm just going to pop out of this i'm going to pop out of it yeah i just have news copilot and I'm really glad to hear that it's as good as the uh, chat GPT-4 because I had heard people talking about that and saying they're paying for it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I need to pay for it to get it better. But at, at the moment, it, it kind of worked for me. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not many not many people seem to know that. And it, that's been the case for a little while. And um, you'll have noticed that each time I, I showed the screen, I made the screen bigger so people could see it. But as well as that, it, may, it might be easier to manipulate initially when you get used to it, because it's more like the chat GPT for a framework, but they're exactly the same thing. And the reason it's free is because Microsoft has has made it free for all of its users because it's enhanced everything. I mean, I don't know if you've used Copilot in Excel yet. Has anybody done that or is anybody using Copilot in Outlook and Mail where it can answer your mails for you and send them off automatically, reply to them automatically? I don't it's... think I'm trusted to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm heard of a teacher. Yeah. I don't know if not a friend of mine or anything, but was I, used I to generate answers um, for parent teacher meetings to about the students and I was like oh I don't think so either <laughs> yeah yeah to, to automatically generate them and send them to the parents I know I know but the great thing though is to remember Linda thanks so much because um that's reminded me the great thing to remember is that AI is a great tool that's all it is but it's nothing without the human being you know, everyone's, you know, sometimes people are very uncomfortable about AI, but if you don't turn your computer on, it can do nothing. You know, So the, the perfect combination is the human and AI in tandem with each other. So, yeah, get, get, the, get it to generate some questions for the parent teacher meetings, but then review them yourself. <laughs> Fine tune them yourself. So anybody else? Thanks very much. Linda. Anybody else with a pinch point? Anything that drives you crazy? Yeah. Hi, Kathy. Just wondering, how do you word it for the scheme of work? Oh, your individual really modules. Ask me that because I have that on the next slide. Yay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Paula. <laughs> and the reason I have it on the next slide, Paula, is because it's the number one question everybody asks me. Yeah. I was oh. interested when I saw that, actually, the years picked up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the number one question. That's why I just did a, a little template. It's on the next slide. And then right. I'll show you what we did with it and what it gives you and what you can do. Thank you. Um, no, not at all. It's my pleasure. I'm delighted because th this isn't a, a mysterious thing, guys. This is a tool that's going to just take the grunt work out of everything you're doing. I mean, you're so busy and so much is expected of you all. And with UDL now as well, UDL was, you know, Universal Design of Learning was a mountain to climb, I think, last year until AI really came on board so freely available to everybody and now udl is something that you could really think about incorporating into your class without spending 10 hours trying to do it i don't know what you guys think anybody want to say anything about that no okay no yeah, I suppose if you gave it the right prompt and like if it's somebody who was, you know, very visually impaired, which I would have one student. Yes, I had one as well. Yeah, yeah. And you could, I suppose, ask it for um material that would yeah. suit all of the class, including yeah. that one. And yeah. I'm not sure what would be back yet. Or you can also for UDL, um, uh, you can have your lesson plan and then you can 
ask AI to make it into a PowerPoint, you know, for the more visually inclined students. So that the students, just different ways of learning, you can ask our, um, AI to put the same lesson plan. So you've, you've, you've generated one lesson plan through AI and you've seen us, we did that together there a few minutes ago with the um, present continuous. You can take that one lesson plan and you can ask AI to change it into a PowerPoint, to change it into a video. So you're covering three or four bases for different learning needs of people in your classroom. And it has, it has been very little extra work for yourself and your adult students can pick and choose which one that they're going to explore, which one they're going to learn through, or indeed they might pick two or three of them. It's just fantastic. Um, for appropriate class games or quizzes, I find it fantastic for that, especially for literacy, because uh, I, I don't know if you'd agree with me when I've been doing literacy before. I'm more ESOL now. Um, a lot of the literacy was focused towards younger people rather than adults, and some of them found that a tiny bit patronizing. I don't know if you agree or not. But let's get back to the scheme of work, because this is what I have on the next slide. Now, here is a prompt for a scheme of work. And please join in anyway, anytime you want to turn on your microphone and say anything you wish. So we had our, in our context, our intent, the format we wanted, we were precise, all of those things. So let's look at this. You're a teacher. You teach adult English as a second language, for example, or you teach um, teenagers geography or whatever you want. So you've given it the context and you've given it some precise information. These adults are at level two English, so that's pretty good that it knows that. Generate a scheme of work for 30 weeks in a table format. It is one class per week, or it could be two classes per week or six classes, per, four, four classes per week over a period of 30 weeks. So we know that 30 weeks in a table format, one class a week is 30 weeks. But the more precise you are, sorry guys, the more precise you are, the better. In a table format, because that's how most scheme of work are presented, include all requirements for English as a second language. Now this prompt isn't perfect. Because why why is it not perfect? Why is it okay? What do you want to say about it? Turn on your mic there and say what you want to say. Well, I've used this prompt and it did give the result, a, a good result. Is there anything you'd like to change there or anything you notice there? Well, maybe the last sentence. Yeah, what do you, you think? All requirements. I mean, what are the requirements? You might need to be more specific about exactly. what those are. Sorry, what's your name? AD. AD, sorry, AD, I beg your pardon. I'm finding it really hard not being able to see anybody. Um, AD, yeah, are you absolutely right. So I didn't, I left it like this and I put it in, but that's where your questions then, if you if you get your scheme of work and you're not satisfied, you can go and you can outline what those requirements are because that last sentence is a bit vague, isn't it? It's not very precise. So yeah, great, absolutely. And that was deliberate. And I'm going to show you now what we came up with. Does anybody else want to say about anything about this prompt before we continue? Um, you repeated yourself there about 30 weeks table. Was that necessary? Um, I, I, I thought it was. Um, and again, I missed your name. I'm terribly sorry. Um, I Bridie. Thought, thanks very much. It's only on my screen for a second. I thought it was Bridie because I wanted to be as precise as possible. That was our level two English generate scheme of work for 30 weeks in table format. Okay. And then I want more information on that. There's one class per week. I want to make it really, really clear that it's not two classes or three classes. I don't want it to have a messy full table that I'm going to have to change. Are you with me? So yeah, you can you can be as precise as you wish. You cannot be too precise. Um, Kathy, will it understand nice. level two English, or do you have to say Sefer, one of the Sefer levels? Um, you can say whatever you want because it recognizes all of them. That's another great question. All of the information that was ever generated on the internet is available. So it's going to know um, uh, Cambridge English. It's going to know the European grade. It's going to know um, ESOL. It's going to know and recognize all of them and um, give you what you expect. And um, there's people working constantly trying to make sure that the information you get is um, 
good decent information as well that is not biased um you know different cultures have different outlooks towards education or whatever or um how can I say this? Even might get information that is culturally acceptable in one area, not in another. So we have human beings, people working on information that's given to make sure that it's the correct information. And that's when it comes back to us as well to be good actors. If we ever get anything back after asking AI something and we don't think it's okay, we can we can just do a thumbs down or we can um make a little comment as to why we don't think it's okay. Um, and uh, right, was it yourself that asked about assignments being copied? Cathy, uh, you're breaking up on us there. Your, your, your sound is getting a bit glitchy and now you're just gone. Um, okay. Can you hear me, Cathy? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're back with us again. Okay. Cathy, I was just thinking you could ask it because you didn't put any emphasis whether you wanted on reading, writing, listening or speaking and you might be teaching a particular module or you might be teaching a full programme so you might want to emphasise reading or writing or listening and speaking. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic point as well. Absolutely. So you can see already that we have these few lines in front of us and that's why I left it up here on this slide so everybody can have a look at their leisure. You can see already where you can be more precise and give it more context. That, that's a great point. Thanks a million. So th this is the, the prompt I wrote. And let's just go ahead with this prompt and see what we get. And then the great points you guys made, you can add that in then. You can say, no, I want, the, I want you to be more specific about the requirements, which include or I want you to be more specific about the learning outcomes and the four pillars of language, which include, you know, for example. So let's see. Um, Kathy, quick question there from Marion. Does oh, it yeah, recognize QQI levels for assignment briefs, etc.? Yeah, it does. You see, all of this is on the Internet. So, so this isn't a magic thing. All this is is a machine that's been fed information about everything that's ever been available on the Internet. Online. Kathy, can I ask another question? Of course. I'll keep jumping in there. So, no, so if I copied um an assignment brief template into it and yes. asked fill in fill in the required information based yes. on say ESOL level two reading. Yes. Um, for would it would it fill in all the information that needs to go in? Yes. <laughs> Isn't it great? But again, Linda, just to come back to your prompt, okay, make sure you give it really clear instruction about exactly what you want. Yeah, because brief you don't, up, you don't end up with a table with two columns that are three feet long, you know. <laughs> yeah. writing, writing new briefs up are always painful. <laughs> oh, painful. And it'll create a rubric for you, anything. It's just the more precise you are, make sure you give it, and it is only a stupid machine. It's relying on you to give it the good information so it can generate what you want. And you can also copy any report that you have into it. You can just copy and paste or you, and, it, and ask it to synopsize it for you. So maybe you're going to a meeting and you haven't had time to read the full report. You can have a quick synopsis or to pick out the main points in that. So you can, you can um, migrate any document or file into Copilot on your screen and ask it to do whatever you want to do with that document. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd used it before to change an essay into a report, which needed, you know, it worked pretty okay. Yeah. So if it worked pretty okay, what you can, what you could do then in the, in the next time you're trying something like that and you're, and you're thinking it's just okay, um, you can say, okay, that's fine, but what I want now is more concise language, more professional language. Um, I feel you didn't um, outline the points uh, well. I feel you pay, um, you paid too much attention to the title. I want more attention paid to the content. You know, it's always back to the prompt. Yeah, that's it will give you what you ask for it. So if you think the result is only OK, that usually means our prompt was only OK. Now, I'm not talking about you personally, of course, you're wonderful. <laughs> no, that's why I need to learn about prompts. I was like, uh, I know that 
big thing to keep your prompts right. And, and it's practice. And there's lots of apps out there, like the perfect prompt for this and the perfect prompt for that. And by all means, everybody have a look at that if you want. But there's thousands of them. Um, whereas they all start here. You know, it's practice. People people have a jo- jobs creating prompts and nothing but prompts. Companies are um, employing people to create prompts for them so they get really good results well I'm the, uh, quick question from bridie yep. and can it be used to find plagiarism like scanning a student's work yeah so that's a great question and 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 this is something that people aren't necessarily going to like the answer to hugely okay so let's look at plagiarism in 2020 um, in 2020, plagiarism was I either straight up copied my friend's work or I went into Wikipedia and I cut and paste and I stuck it into a Microsoft document. And then maybe if I was bothered, I might have changed the font and made sure the font was OK. But my teacher probably knew immediately that it was uh, plagiarized before it went anywhere near turn it in. OK, so that's what plagiarism used to be. Now people are saying plagiarism um, when somebody uses uh, ChatGPT or Copilot, same thing, um, and says, write me an essay about, um, uh, you guys give me an example. Give me an example of an essay or an assignment you've given your students. You can just unmute yourself there and tell me. Give me the title of an assignment or an essay you've asked your students to write. You know they've used AI. Um, QQI level four asks that they write a, a an essay on ICT information communication technology. ICT, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, so if I was your students, the first thing I'd do is get on my phone, go onto AI, put in that question, and ask it to generate it. And uh, why wouldn't I? Because it's free. It's everywhere. It's completely ubiquitous. So there's two things we can do. Um. You can ask them to go ahead and use AI and then read it and edit it if it is or is not correct. And then the next time we're in class, we'll discuss your findings. And they're going to go, what? But it's already been proven that the student who uses AI gets the assignment generated. And maybe it's a thousand words, 500 words, 3000 words, whatever it is. If they're asked by their tutor or teacher, to edit it, it means they have to read it. And it, it has been shown that that student learns more by the act of reading it, looking for um, material to edit than the student in 2020 who just pasted and copied from, um, copied and pasted from Wikipedia. So what we're going to have to do, guys, is the question was, can it detect plagiarism? It's not, I would argue, it's not, is it plagiarism when AI is completely ubiquitous? You know, I would suggest that what we need to do is ask the students to produce the work in a different way. That maybe they present their findings on ICT orally in class, having written the presentation. And even if AI wrote the presentation, the student will have to read it before they presented in class. Um, can I just say uh, that that's fine for that level, like at that lower level, but when they move on to another education program, that's not acceptable. And uh, there's actually, um, there's a website called copyleaks.com. Yeah. Yeah. And I use that. So I have a big issue with students because uh, they're in a, a mainstream environment with yeah. their, their backgrounds and uh, in particular the Ukrainians. So they can use ChatGPT very effectively to produce answers for, say, for example, QQI level four assignments. But I have brought to their attention copy leaks because they're going to go on yeah. to level five and six. And yeah. If you paste that work into copy leaks, it shows that it's AI and that further, further ed. Um, when they submit through the plagiarism tool, the, the tutor has access to the copy leaks yeah. tool. Yeah, yeah. To find AI. So it's, I get where you're saying, and that's brilliant to teach them how to use it. But uh, yeah. sort of beyond that, there's there are other implications, I suppose. We do need to teach them that they can't just copy and use it because it can be detected. Yeah, so that's a great point. Thanks a million. So it can be detected right now. But it won't be long before it can't be um, detected. 
And uh, what I'm really saying is that we're going to have to change how we assess people. And I know nobody likes hearing that because it's so much work already, but they're working on it in um, third level. How it, And that's why UDL is so huge. Um, I'm sure many people have their UDL badge here already today. Um, that the actual m method of assessment is going to have to change because you, you you cannot stop people from using AI. It's completely ubiquitous already. And um, the possibility of it detecting plagiarism is possible, but it's not 100% and it's not going to be possible this time next year because AI will have improved so much. Um, if I, a student can put in an example of their own writing, ask AI to improve it a little bit and um, copy its tone, and that will produce an entirely different assignment than the assignment that um, it would, again, it's down to the student's prompt and the quality of their prompt. So yeah, you're completely right, but that fallback on being able to detect whether AI was used or not will not be relevant in a year's time. So we're going to have to change how we assess the student. Um, but, Kathy, but that, it's not a bad thing. That's, Kathy, you know, can I give you just a time check? We've got about five minutes left. Okay, let's go. Super. <laughs> so All there right. we, th thank you so much for the questions, guys. Because that was what, Jillian what I, with the questions there and the points. I'm so interested to hear what you have to say. It's so great. Um, so there's our prompt and it didn't change anything. You guys spotted great things that could be improved with it. And here is the recording. And let's just play it. Okay. So. There it is up to Copilot. It opens up the AI. And there is that, and we just make the screen a bit bigger. And that's lovely. You might need to read out a bit of it, Kathy, because the screen is text is small for us to see. Yeah, so here okay. we are. Yeah. You are a teacher, you teach adults in a second language, the one classroom period of 30 weeks. So this is our scheme of work, okay? And the co-pilot says, certainly. And then there it goes, week one. Okay, topic, you'll see it's in Excel. So you can edit it in Excel. So that's really basic. Okay. But it is appropriate for that level. And that is your basic, basic scheme of work. And you guys were exactly right what you pointed out in the prompt. So the better and more precise the prompt is, okay. far greater quality of scheme of work. But you could use that if you wanted. You can go down to the end, you can press your copy and you can start working on it yourself. Some people are far more comfortable if they have some direct input themselves. Okay, so that's that there. Now, and let's just fly over here because I want to show you these guys. So here, there's a million apps, millions and millions of apps. We could make an app in AI. We can ask AI to make an app for us today and it will do that and it will generate it. So the problem we're going to have is which apps are good or not. So these are the top apps and um, for, for us, for tutors. There's Flip and what I've done is I've um, embedded a link with them all. So if you just click it, it just brings you straight to it, okay? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh my gosh, I've completely gone back now in my, in my excitement. <laughs> oh, guys, what have I done? <laughs> Now, now, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. More hurry, the less speed, isn't it? And Ed Puzzle, Ed Puzzle is wonderful. It it's, um it puts text into video. CuriePod, this is the one that makes a presentation for you, and it makes a lesson out of the presentation instantaneously. It's just fantastic as a backup. Have a look. Kahoot, I'm sure everybody knows and uses all the time, but it's so handy. Um, BBC Teach is excellent, always was, I'm guessing always will be. My absolute favourite at the moment is this one, EduAid. Have a look at this app, guys, when you get a chance. It's really wonderful and it's for making lesson plans. Um, I, I think you might like it. And it will. Oh, it's so good at making lesson plans. I think it will help your own prompts as well. 
And of course, Flip. Flip has been around for a long time. And it used to have the longer name and it's changed to this now because it's all cool. Each of those, as I said, it's embedded. You can just click on them and it'll bring you straight to it. And when you do click on it and it opens it up, we, one of these sites has an area in it for how to use it or if you need some help or how to get started. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. You were really wonderful. And again, you've been so great that you're here on a Friday just before the break. I hope a few bits of the information you got today will be useful to you. And you might have a chance to look at the recording again and explore the prompts option and play around with it a little bit until you're more comfortable. So I hope you feel a little bit more empowered now than you did when we started. And thank you again. It's been a pleasure. So if you have any last questions before we finish up, Fergus will be in charge of the time there. Um, yes. Should Cathy turn on your camera for a sec? Uh, yeah. Let's hope your sound still stays. Thanks so much, Cathy. That was fantastic. People are putting in. That was amazing. Thanks so much. I shall spend my Easter halls chilly and dough. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. But they're loving it, Kathy. So thanks a million. Uh, I'm so everyone's happy. texting in. Thanks so much. I'm so happy. And thank you so much for the great questions and the participation. It's so brilliant to speak to everybody and Fergus as well. And happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> yeah, listen. Uh, happy Easter, everyone. Kathy, thanks again. And it was tough at the beginning, Kathy. You having to log off and come back on all, but you stay. Thanks calm. so much for your patience. Thank you. you delivered for... everything. Well, Linda stepped in and kind of gave us a, a no, an yay for Linda. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so thanks everyone. And I'll record this and put it up next week on the Nala YouTube channel. And Kathy's going to send me her presentation and the little video from the BBC, etc. And Ooh. I'll email it on to everybody. So the the two videos from the from the last two days webinars are up on the Nala YouTube channel already. So thanks, Kathy. Well done, and I'll see you all soon. You're so welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.